Dr. Christian's office. The Vaseline Program, presenting a new Dr. Christian prize play called Such Things Don't Happen by Barbara Corcoran of South Hamilton, Massachusetts. Starring Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. <music> Fellows, is the man on her mind you? Or do you spoil your chances by things like loose dandruff and unruly stubborn hair? Guard against these signs of dry scalp. If loose dandruff makes you self-conscious, if your hair just won't stay in place, start using Vaseline hair tonic now. Vaseline hair tonic supplements the natural scalp oils and unlike most hair preparations, contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. Thus, Vaseline hair tonic checks dry scalp. The routine is simple. Every morning, rub a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic directly on the scalp or apply with your comb. This overcomes dryness, grooms your hair neatly for the entire day. Then before each shampoo, Apply Vaseline hair tonic generously and massage your scalp vigorously. This loosens unsightly dandruff scales, stops uncomfortable itchy tightness. Yes, for hair that looks good and a scalp that feels good, use Vaseline hair tonic regularly. Buy a bottle from your druggist tonight. Tonight's prize play, we meet Dr. Christian and Judy Price driving along the river road on a sunny fall afternoon. That engine certainly sounds unhappy, Dr. Christian. Yes. I'll leave it at the garage unless I've made my call on Mrs. Prince. We'll uh, walk home across the fields. Would you mind? Oh, I'd love it. It's such a beautiful day. Ah, uh, this is a call I wish I could skip. Mrs. Prince? Are nerves acting up again? Mm, her temper, you mean. <laughs> Whenever she doesn't get her own way, she has an attack of nerves. There's nothing really wrong with her, hmm? If she were any healthier, she'd burst. What's she in a temper about now? Oh, I'm not so sure, but I think it's her daughter. Helen? Oh, what trouble could she be to anyone? She's a darling. Yes, she is a darling. And there's a nice young man who thinks so. Oh, I begin to get it. You mean Johnny Dodge. I saw him downtown yesterday. Yes, he just got a medical discharge from the army. Helen told me a while ago that she and Johnny planned to get married when he came home. Well, he's a nice boy. Yes, he is indeed. But Mrs. Prince is a tremendous snob, you know. Mm. And to her way of thinking, Johnny comes from the wrong side of the railroad tracks. So that's what's wrong with her nerves, huh? Well, I'm not sure, but that was the first thing I thought of when I heard her wailing on the phone this morning. Well, here we are. Now we'll find out what's up. have it. My nerves won't stand it. But, Mother, if you'd only listen. Never mind, Helen. Let's don't talk about it anymore. Hi, everybody. It's Judy and the doctor. Good morning. Oh, Dr. Christian, thank heaven you've come. If I had to stand much more of this wrangling, my nerves would crack. Oh, I don't really think so. Well, how are you, Johnny? It's nice to see you back. Thank you, Dr. Christian. I thought it was going to be nice to be back. And isn't it? No, everything's a mess. Oh, Johnny, don't say that. Well, young man, you don't realize your blessings. You're lucky to have a girl like Helen. Oh, thanks, Judy. But things are in rather a mess. You both know what I think. I've made no bones about it. Oh, what's it all about? Dr. Christian, as you know, I come from the oldest and probably the most illustrious family in this town. My ancestry goes back to the Mayflower. Well, sometimes I think that boat must have been bigger than the Queen Mary. My great-great-great-grandfather was the revolutionary hero, Jonathan Jackson. Yes, I know. Well, who doesn't? She told everybody in River's End at least once a week for 40 years. Helen, I, I can't understand you. Have you no family pride? Jonathan Jackson lies buried on a hilltop where you pass every day. Doesn't your heart swell with pride when you think of it? I'm not interested in Jonathan Jackson. I'm interested in Johnny Dodge. Johnny Dodge. Now, Johnny, I don't mean to be rude, but you know yourself that you... That I come from the wrong end of town, and the pure blood of the princes must not be tainted by the common strain of the Dodges, etc., etc. Come on, Helen, let's get out of here. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. Mrs. Prince, you're kind of idiotic snobbery you went out of date long ago. It's high time you realized it. Really, Dr. Christian? Yes, I know. 
You are outraged. But listen to me. Your ancestor, Jonathan Jackson, was a fine, heroic man, and he gave his life for his country. All right. A couple of generations from now, the descendants of Johnny Dodge are going to boast to their friends that their grandfather fought for his country in Africa and was wounded and decorated for his courage. The comparison is absurd. Johnny's just a corporal. And where would our army be without corporals? The army needs a darn sight more corporals than generals. You can abuse me all you want, Mrs. Prince, but don't make any cracks about corporals. Oh, come now, Mrs. Prince. Give the children your blessing. Indeed, I shall not. And when I need more medical attention, Dr. Christian, I'm afraid I shall have to appeal to another doctor. I really cannot have this meddling in my private affairs. Fine, fine. Perhaps your new physician will appreciate Jonathan Jackson more than I do. Good day, Mrs. Prince. Oh, Dr. Christian, I'll walk out to the car with you. Thanks for trying, Dr. Christian. Well, I'm afraid I just made matters worse. No, they couldn't be worse. Anyway, it's good to know somebody's on my side. She's a hateful old snob, Johnny. And I think so, too. I can't figure out how she got such a sweet kid as Helen for a daughter. Uh, good luck to you, Johnny. And don't give up the ship. Thanks. I'm still in there pitching. Ah, I'm sorry I lost my temper. She had it coming to her. But that isn't the way to fix things. I wish I could have helped them. Look, there's that little graveyard of the early settlers where old Jonathan Jackson is buried. Really is a lovely spot. Oh, Judy, let me out up there by the big maple, will you? Hmm? Uh, you take the car to the garage and meet me here on the way back. I want to think, and that looks like a good, peaceful spot. All right. It'll do you good to relax in the sun for an hour or so. Uh, here, take the robe from the back of the car and have a nap. Oh, I, I like the grass better than a robe. I'm not so sleepy. But thanks, Judy. And uh, tell Warren to give the car a good tune-up. Okay. Well, here's Jonathan Jackson's tombstone. That should make a good backrest. What did the old boy do that was so wonderful anyway? Let's see. Jonathan Jackson, born April 12th, 1759, died February 1779. Oh. He was only 20 when he was killed. Fell at the Battle of Vincennes. Hero and patriot. I wonder what he was really like. Not much like Martha Prince, I'll bet. Oh, warm and nice it is here in the sun. <sighs> oh, I hope Judy takes her time. Brian, huh? Then give the guy a little leg room, will you? After all, I was here first. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. I didn't realize there was anyone here. I'm here. Oh, of course, I, I beg your pardon. Yeah, you said that. Do you, uh, uh are you from River's End? I sure am. <laughs> I was brought to River's End a long time ago. Oh, I, I see. Hey, you see, I'm a doctor here, and I know most people. Yeah, sure, I know. You're Dr. Christian. And your name? Jackson. Jonathan Jackson. Did you say Jonathan Jackson? Yep. But that's impossible. Hey, look, you ain't telling me I don't know my own name, are you, Doctor? No, no, of course not, but... Did I understand you correctly? Did you say Jonathan Jackson? Holy smokestock, you're a little slow on the uptake, aren't you? Uh, what was that? No, oh, just a clap of thunder. Thunder? On a day like this? Yeah, a pal of mine, a fellow named Joe. He's in charge of the Thunder Department. When he thinks I'm getting too fresh, he slams out with a peel of thunder. That burns me up sometimes, but I have to take it. You see, he's an angel, so he ranks me. Joe's a good fellow, though. Just a mite too proper sometimes. Now, this is almost beyond belief. Oh, there are lots of things people think are beyond belief. But that's just because they don't keep their eyes and ears open. Say, move over a couple of inches so I can read that inscription, will you? Hmm. Jonathan Jackson, hero and patriot. Now, don't that sound pretty? I think they might have built me up a little more, though. They might have put in about how single-handed I held off the might of the British Army and through my extreme valor and chivalry... Hey, Joe, go jump in a lake, will you? That guy won't even let me get by with a fraction of an inch on a lot. 
Lieutenant Jackson, I think I like you. Oh, thanks. You're not a bad egg yourself. But tell me, if you lived in the 18th century, how is it you talk 20th century slang? Oh, I believe in keeping up with the times. I see. After all, I'm only 20. Why should I talk like George Washington? Jonathan, do you come to River Saint often? Well, I'll tell you, Doc. Uh, that's a military secret. Oh. Uh, could you tell me what brings you here now? Yeah, sure. It's that Tom Poozled Hornswoggle descendant of mine, Martha Prince. I hoped it was that. Uh, she's getting above herself again. I put up with her for a long time. All the time she was telling those lies about me in the women's clubs, making them think I fought the revolution single-handed. <laughs> when it was only the Battle of Vincennes. <laughs> Judge, Doctor, I didn't fight anything single-handed. I just like to hear myself talk. At that doggone battle of Vincennes, I fired one shot that didn't hit nothing but a butternut tree. And before I could even cock the gun again, the British bumped me off, but good. And it sure makes my blood boil to hear that Martha shooting her mouth off. To hear her talk, you'd think she won the revolution herself. Mm, Martha is certainly proud of you. Proud of me? Nuts. She's just a snob that likes to brag about her ancestors. Well, it doesn't do any harm, I can bear it. But when she starts kicking out a nice boy like that Dodge kid, who really did some fighting, then I can't stand it any longer. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to go down and tell her off. Uh, Jonathan, can I come with you? Sure. I figured I'm taking you along. Good. <laughs> what are you going to say to her? No, I haven't planned anything yet. I'll make it up as I go along. But it'll be hot, Doctor. It'll be hot. Huh? Shall we get started? Jonathan, I wouldn't miss this for anything in the world. Out, Jonathan. Oh, boy, am I looking forward to this. So am I. Oh, Mrs. Prince. Who's there? Oh, it's you. I thought we had it understood, Dr. Christie. Oh, I'm not here on a professional call, Mrs. Prince. Though I'm glad to notice you're looking so much better. Uh, this time my visit is purely social. Really? May I ask who that is with you? I brought him to meet you. He's a young man named Jackson. I ran across him in the graveyard. He looked it. I uh, think Mr. Jackson wants to give you a little advice. Advice? About uh, Johnny and Helen. You see, uh, he's a veteran himself. Hmm, a veteran. If you'll excuse my saying so, young man, you look more like a tramp. Well, it's been quite a while since I changed my clothes. Obviously. But a soldier has more important things to think about. Soldier indeed. Some riffraff that got drafted. He's probably AWOL, Dr. Christian. He's obviously a person of that Dodge Boys type. Probably a friend of his. Indeed, I am a friend of his and proud of it. Ah, you see? Either you've conspired with him, Dr. Christian, or he's pulled the wool over your eyes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a speaking engagement at the DAR meeting. Not so quick, Mrs. P. I haven't begun. Dr. Christian, will you take this hoodlum back where you found him? Hoodlum? Oh, Mrs. Prince, you will hurt his feelings. He comes from a very fine old family. A oh, fine family, indeed. It's perfectly plain to see what he is. Is it really? What is he? He's riffraff of the lowest kind. An unmannerly lout from the dregs of society. Just look at him. His background is written all over him. That's true. My father was a blacksmith. Ah, you see? A comrade. Oh, but, uh, Mrs. Prince, some of our best people are working people. Oh, Dr. Christian, that's pure sheer communism. This man has bewitched you. He's obviously an agitator. Well, I'm agitated, if that's what you mean. But you're the gal that's done it, Martha. D how dare you call me Martha? Keep your shirt on, Duchess. Now, about my family... I might as well make a full confession. I had a brother, William, who was an awful drunk. I don't doubt it in the least. Ah, William was really no good. He spent most of his time in the stocks. In the what? Uh, he means in jail. Oh, I thought you meant he was a financier. Well, he was. He made off with the whole Easter collection at the Congregational Church. Oh. They caught him, though. He was hanged, finally. So that's your fine old family. Well, that's, that, that's part of it. I could tell you more, but, well, I won't. By the way, Mrs. Prince, what's all this nonsense about Jonathan Jackson being your great-great-great-grandfather? Well, you know he wasn't. He wasn't? Of course not. You, you impertinent puppy. Of course he was. Oh, no. That's a little exaggeration of yours, and you know it. Jonathan Jackson was never married. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. You know perfectly well that it was William, not Jonathan, who was your great-great-great-granddaddy. Why, you... And Willie was no hero. He drank and he stole and he ended up on the gallows. Well, what do you know about that? He wasn't such a glamorous ancestor after all, was he, Mrs. Prince? It's a lie. How would this upstart know anything about my ancestor? 
And you came across all this one day long ago when you were reading about your family history. So you decided to swap William for Jonathan. Well, you... After all, who was there to check up on you? You can't prove it. Uh, don't tempt him too far, Mrs. Prince. It's true, isn't it, Martha? No one would ever believe you. They wouldn't take your word against mine, a disreputable-looking thing like you. What about me? If you ever say one word against my family, Dr. Christian, I'll, I'll have you driven out of town. Okay, if you want to play rough, I can play rough, too. And let me begin by telling you exactly what I think of you, you old... Oh, nuts. That Joe won't ever let me cuss at a lady. He don't understand that sometimes they need it. What was that? Thunder, of course. What did it sound like? Oh, he's got a talented thunder department. <laughs> Are you mad? Both of you? Never felt sane on my life. Now, look, Martha, I can't hang around here all day. Are you or are you not going to let Helen marry Johnny Dodge? Certainly not. Yeah, then I'll just have to toddle over to that D.A.R. meeting and tell him you're a fake. I'll tell him you're a direct descendant of William, who was a bum. They'd never believe you. Oh, yes, they will. Go ahead and try it. You'll be thrown out. Martha, is that a challenge? Call it what you like. I'm not intimidated by a ruffian like you. You heard her, Dr. Christian. She asked for it. Where are you going? To the D.A.R. meeting. You coming? Uh, no, wait. He won't dare. Now, listen to me, Martha Prince. This is your last chance. This man can ruin you forever in River's End. That's nonsense. Ah, if he goes ahead with it, you'll be the laughing stock of the town. I'm warning you. You can't frighten me. We are not trying to frighten you. We are just trying to make you understand how wrong you are. You put ridiculous artificial social values above the values of human happiness and self-respect. Oh. You're willing to throw away your own daughter's happiness for a foolish, snobbish whim of yours. That isn't even based on the truth. Pride in one's family is no foolish whim. Well, it is if you carry it too far. If it blinds you to other people's worth. Now, let me tell you this, old girl. Old girl! One of the things that the American Revolution was fought for was so a girl can marry the guy she likes without getting permission of her great-great-great-grandfather. Get it? He means in America, Mrs. Prince, a man is accepted for what he is himself. Now, take you, for instance, Martha. How would you like it if folks looked down on you just because your ancestor was a drunken bum? I can't stand this any longer. Get out of here, both of you, before I call the police. Well, I guess there's no other way, Dr. Christian. I just got to make that speech to the DA. DA. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's drastic, Jonathan. I know, Doctor, but it's got to be done. She's too pig-headed for any other way. Who are you? Me? Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm Jonathan Jackson. Well, I'll see you at the, after the DA army. Wait, but you said, how dare you call yourself Jonathan Jackson? You're an imposter. That's what you are. You, you're just trying to frighten me by claiming to be some descendant of Jonathan Jackson. Who said anything about descendants? Then who are you? I'm the original. You mean this, the real Jonathan Jackson? In the flesh, madam. Well, at least in a manner of speaking. Oh, there's a strong family resemblance. Oh, oh gosh, is there? Be out of your mind. On the contrary, he's one of the sanest men I ever met. But such things don't happen. They just... Oh, hold everything. She's going to faint. I don't oh. think so. She's too interested in what's going on. I can't stand it. <laughs> Simply can't stand it. My nerves are on. Hey, listen, Martha. My own nerves aren't any good. Too good. And believe me, you're a shock to him. So let's get this whole thing over with. You must be an imposter. Okay, if you want proof. Somewhere you have a letter from me to Willie, and it says, Dear brother, I'm sorry to hear you stole Mr. Jones' horse. Stop. It... That's enough. You must be telling the truth. No one knows about that letter but me. So shakes hands with your ancestor, Mrs. Prince, and uh, oh. he's the man you talked about for 30 years. <laughs> we won't ever talk about it again, I'll bet. You don't think much of me, do you, Martha? I, I, I don't know what to think. Well, that's all right. I don't think much of you either. <laughs> no hard feelings. But, Helen, now, now, there's a nice girl, and you're going to let her marry Johnny, aren't you? I, I guess so. And you're going to give her a pretty wedding. Yes, yes. That's a girl. And you're going to be proud of your son-in-law. Yes. Oh, that's splendid. You'll be happier, Mrs. Prince. Really, you will. And you'll stick to your bargain, won't you, Martha? Yes. And no monkey business when my back is thunder, so help me. I'll come trotting right back to make that speech to the D.A.R. And, boy, it'll be a honey. No, I'll, 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 I'll do whatever you say. Good. Go on, Mrs. B. I'll be seeing you around. Oh, good. Goodbye. Well, she really did faint this time. I'll leave a lay. She'll come out of it. Well, I suppose you'll be leaving now. Yep. I promised Joe I'd play a couple of hands of poker with him before supper. That Joe, he always wins. 
Well, thank you for all the good you've done, Jonathan. I'll just skip it, Doctor. The pleasure was mine. Now I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. It's been nice meeting you. Now forget it, Doc. It's been out of this world. Well, he's gone. Dr. Christian, I'm back. Huh? What? What's that? Uh, oh, Judy, it's you. <laughs> sure, it's me. Don't look so surprised to see me. I'm sorry I took so long, but something amazing happened, and I couldn't come away without hearing all about it. What was it? Well, I was quite a long time at the garage waiting for Warren to fix the car. And when I came back by the Prince house, Helen and Johnny came tearing out all excited. And guess what? What? Mrs. Prince has consented to the wedding. She has? Isn't it wonderful? And she's giving them a lovely wedding. Well, what changed her mind? And nobody seems to know. Helen says she's like a different person. Oh, those kids are so happy. It's a joy to see them. Well, that's wonderful. Isn't it? I knew you'd be interested. Yes, I'm certainly interested. So old Jonathan Jackson won't stand between them after all. Fell at the Battle of Vincennes. Hero and patriot. He must have been something. Ah, he was, Judy. He was. Take it from one who knows. Jonathan was quite a boy. curtain descends on another Dr. Christian prize play. And while we wait for our star, Gene Hersholt, to bring us his weekly greeting, Judy Price has a word for you. Our war plants are producing a mighty flood of weapons, and that's good. But daily contact with chemicals and dyes or machine oils is producing sore hands for many war plant workers, and that isn't good. And here's how to protect those hard-working hands. Before starting your job, give them a light coating of Vaseline petroleum jelly. This helps prevent grit and grime from being ground into the skin. That's safeguarding against infection. Also makes grease and dirt much easier to remove, and less apt to irritate. Then after washing up, apply Vaseline Petroleum Jelly again to supplement the natural skin oil so often scrubbed away with strong soaps and cleansers. In addition, this will soothe minor cuts and abrasions, help promote quick healing. If your hands work hard, give them before and after protection with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Keep a convenient tube or a jar always handy. Remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Cheese Bill Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. Now, here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. The uh, delightful fantasy you just heard was conjured up by Barbara Corcoran of South Hamilton, Massachusetts, author of uh, several one-act plays and radio dramas. Next week, we plan to present a new prize play called The Fugitive by Nelson A. Bond of Roanoke, Virginia. We invite you to listen to the Vaseline program again next Wednesday evening, same time and same station. And until then, I'll say good night. So you've got chapped lips? Then get Vaseline Lip Eyes. Healing begins almost instantly, only 25 cents. Ask your druggist for Vaseline Lip Eyes. Friends, make sure all your Christmas mail carries Christmas seals, the seals that finance the fight against tuberculosis. Bob Anderson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.